From the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello and season's greetings from Ropecast. I'm Peter Tischer, and today I'm without my regular partner Roger Charlton, who's doing some last-minute Christmas shopping, I believe. But I am with someone else. I am with Paul Kingsbury. Hi, Paul. Hello. Yes. Season's greetings to our listeners. Yeah, he <laughs> is.、Uh, he's a teacher at our university here in the Zealand. But what's more important, he is an expert on music, and he is an expert on Christmas songs. And what I would like to talk with him about today is number one Christmas songs. So Christmas songs that top the charts on Christmas Eve, if you like.、Mm. Um, but let's do a little bit of history first. When did charts? Come into existence in the UK. In the UK, the, the, the first charts、uh, started in 1952. Although there were there were I think three or four rival、uh, charts at first, and then in 1969 the official UK Top 30 was, was launched. Okay,、yeah. and have the charts changed over the years? The way you, you did the survey to have the final chart? Yes, definitely.、Um, In, in the 60s and 70s, record shops sent in their returns to the charts organisation, who calculated、mm-hmm. the charts from that. And of course, in those days, there were only those 45 RPM seven-inch vinyl singles. There、mm-hmm. were no downloads and, and no remixes and so on. So I'm pretty was, sure a lot of our listeners、yeah. do not even remember the 45,、yeah. <laughs> those little、uh, black things. You know,、yes. they call them records. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> And also, you had to you had to sell many more records in those days to get into the charts.、Mm-hmm. I think、uh, on a quiet week these days, you can、uh, be number one by selling under twenty thousand、uh, uh, singles. In those days, that wouldn't get you in the top twenty. In in the seventies, in the seventies or sixties,、okay. yeah. Okay. And coming to the Christmas songs now, did Christmas songs or songs that were number one on Christmas Eve were they always? Christmas songs, songs about Christmas, or just any regular pop songs? Not through the fifties and sixties so much. I mean, for example, the Beatles had about five number one singles over Christmas in the sixties. I think the the golden era of Christmas songs started in the nineteen seventies. The first template, if you like, for yeah, for the yeah. Christmas, the Christmas song、uh, in this era was、uh, John Lennon's "Happy Christmas, War Is Over." Uh-huh. Which ironically only got to number two in 1971. So this is Christmas, and what have you done? Another year over, and you won't just be gone. You could argue that this song, although it was about the end of the Vietnam War, it started a, a new war—a war for the Christmas number one, which was fought <laughs> every year after that. But of course, it's only a, a, a song contest, if you wish.、Uh, so, which Christmas song, actual song about Christmas, was the first to make number one on Christmas Eve? That was Slade in 1973, a, a well-known song. Merry Christmas, everybody! Which is still played at parties and on radio stations to this very day. That was number one for four weeks, I believe, in 1973. But that's a rather regular Christmas song, right?、Mm. Can you give me examples of maybe funny Christmas songs? Are there any of those? Yes, Christmas songs don't always have the word Christmas in the title.、Uh-huh. They can also be novelty songs or comedy songs, meaning、uh, humorous or in some way different from the, the normal pop song. I mentioned earlier that John Lennon only got to number two in, in 1971 because the number one hit was by the comedian. Benny Hill, a song called Ernie, the fastest milkman in the West. Benny, and he drove the fastest milkman in the West. And many, many well-known pop and rock artists made、uh, Christmas songs during the 1970s. Elton John, Queen, Kate Bush, Paul McCartney, Jethro Tull made several, several Christmas songs. But some of the some of the biggest hits were really. 
more on the novelty or comedy area. In 1975, Laurel and Hardy were number two in the charts uh-huh. with a song from a 1930s film. Was that a remix or was that the actual original song? The actual original song, yes. Uh-huh. I, I believe they were, they were both dead by this time, but uh-huh. uh, um, it was called um, On the Trail of the Lonesome Pine. Uh-huh. And, and the song which kept it from number one was also in a way a novelty song because it was rock with opera mixed in. It spent nine weeks at number one in Christmas 1975. Can you guess what it was? Uh, you said it was opera in it? Mm-hmm. Was that Queen? Yeah, like Bohemian oh. Rhapsody. Ah, Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody, yeah. 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 Nine weeks at number one in 1975 over Christmas, Mm -hmm. and it came back in 1991 for another four weeks of Christmas Mm -hmm. following the tragic death of Freddie Mercury in Mm -hmm. December 1991. But that's not really a Christmassy Christmas song, is it? Or no, but it, it, sh- it shows that novelty songs are always popular at this time of year. What about other songs that really deal with Christmas that t- topped? Well, Mud, Lonely This Christmas in 1974 was another very popular Elvis, Elvis-based song uh, concerning Christmas. Mm-hmm. And uh, in 1978, we had Boney M with uh, Mary's Boy Child. Ah, okay. Yeah. So these are real Christmas songs. Yeah. And of course, New Year comes right after Christmas. Were there any songs about the New Year? Yes, not not reaching number one, but uh, for example, U2 and ABBA and George Harrison have all had songs uh, about New Year, okay. uh, or New Year's Day. And also, uh, very strangely, Jethro Tull in 1976 had a hit with a, a song called Ring Out Solstice Bells. <laughs> Ring out, ring solstice bells, ring solstice bells. Mm-hmm. And this concerns, you may have to explain yeah. the title. This concerns the winter solstice, which is the uh, the shortest day of the year. Ah, okay. Uh, the twenty first of December, right? Um, ah. Each year. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. But uh, these. Songs are all well. Um, they go well with the season, don't they? Are were there any songs that were at the top that you would say, well, they aren't very Christmassy? Absolutely. In 1979, there was a song which had a children's choir in, which is often an ingredient of a Christmas hit, but it was very, very miserable and, and unseasonable. And it was a band which had had no single hits since the late 1960s. You perhaps guess it's Pink Floyd and Another Brick in the Wall. Pink Floyd may be singing that we don't need no education, but uh, I'm quite happy that I've been educated uh, today about Christmas songs and Christmas number ones in the 70s. So thank you again, Paul, for uh, for giving us all that information and, and bringing all those musical examples. Let me ask you one final question, though. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite Christmas song from that era, from the 70s? Well, I'm a big fan of a song by Greg Lake called I Believe in Father Christmas. He was a member of Emerson, Lake and Palmer, who were a classical progressive uh, rock group who always plundered classical music. And this song likewise steals many, many uh, phrases from Prokofiev. It concerns uh, disillusion with all the, all the childhood stories and the myths of Christmas. But uh, in the end, you get a hopeful message. Uh, and the message is uh, the Christmas we get, we deserve. So a bit of an existentialist Christmas, you might say. (laughs) Well, maybe that's what we should wish our listeners, but in an optimistic way. May you all get the Christmas that you deserve, folks. Maybe even a little bit more than that. Merry Christmas from Ropecast and Happy New Year from Peter Tischer and Paul Kingsbury. Merry Christmas. Get yeah.
Deserve 